Hi guys, it is Friday night, March 9, 2018. So I've tried several times to make a video responding to a lot of the comments that I got underneath my Just Talking video that I posted a couple of days ago. I want to thank everybody for their wonderful comments. I do have responses to some comments. I am amazed to see how many people have had narcissists in their life, pathological, um, growing up with parents who are narcissists or involved in intimate relationships with narcissists. And I did get some comments from people who said, wow, after listening to you, I realized that I am a scapegoat within that family familial dynamic of narcissism. You know, if I had known that people were posting on YouTube videos educating people about narcissism, speaking their own experiences with narcissists, growing up with narcissistic mothers, malignant narcissistic mothers especially, had I known what I know now, then I absolutely do believe that I could have protected myself better. It is one of the reasons why I have posted periodically videos on my experience. And why do I do it? I do it because it's kind of pay it forward. When you do get an awful lot from people who post their own experiences, when you get to feel that you're not alone, that other people have experienced similar experiences that you have, and most importantly, when they educate on narcissism, I can't help but feel a responsibility to do the same. They helped me so much and I do feel, I feel that responsibility. And maybe it's also in part my having been an AA member for so long. I came into AA at 21 and it's instilled in me that you know, we all have a responsibility to one another. And sharing one's experience, strength, and hope. Unfortunately, my strength and hope part um, has really kind of been lessened a lot. But even experience, hearing somebody's experience, it's helpful when I hear people talk about their experiences. So. It is why I do it, and, and I know how dangerous malignant narcissists are. So for those who left comments, particularly those who left comments saying, wow, I didn't know, I'm just kind of, you know, coming to the realization that I have a narcissist in my life, what I want to say is, please do the research. Put in the YouTube uh, search bar, malignant narcissistic uh, relationships or parents. They are extremely dangerous. They can destroy your life. And if you don't know what they can do and how they operate, and how they manipulate and how they suck you back in and once in you're sucked dry um, the gaslighting the lying the outrageous lying if you don't know what's going on you can become 
their prey, and they can do an awful lot of damage. So please take it very, very seriously if you are in a relationship with a narcissist. And I want to be posting more videos on my experience. Um, experiences, people talking about experiences, that is a very important uh, piece of all of this to really fully understand because when you hear the details of experiences, you can see, you know, the manipulations. Um, at least for me, hearing somebody talk about their experiences, I've learned more. I've learned how it can it can manifest. You know, just reading dry articles about narcissism when they just list the symptoms and all of that, it helps. But for me. It really sinks in when I listen to people's experiences. I'm sorry that I am not doing very well in terms of my health, in terms of my energy. And I don't know what is going on. Now, you know, I mentioned that I went to the Honda dealership in one of my videos yesterday. And I was sitting in the waiting area. And I within about 10 minutes I was having such a hard time keeping my eyes open I could barely hold my head up and at one point I was holding my head like this with my eyes closed and I thought the the exhaustion that came over me was so extremely powerful that I was having a hard time keeping myself awake so while my eyes are closed and I'm sitting like this, all of a sudden I hear snoring. A guy sitting directly across from me in the waiting area was dead asleep, snoring. And I had to wonder if the Wi-Fi in the Honda dealership emits a higher level of radiation than in most other places. Or, if I've hit a, that cumulative effect level that now I'm just so super sensitive to it. I've been noticing lately when I go into office buildings or stores, within 10 minutes I feel like I could collapse. I'm so exhausted. The buzzing right now is very, very loud. And I've been really profoundly exhausted. I left the Honda dealership. I felt a little bit better. And I went to visit one of my neighbors who has Wi-Fi. I don't stay long. I never have. But last night, again, I could barely keep my eyes open. I had to leave. I got home. I couldn't hold my body up in the chair. I had to lay down. I could do nothing. So I'm saying this to let those of you know, those who left comments, those who have emailed, not just recently, but within the last couple of months, that I unfortunately am really uh, struggling with an awful lot of symptoms despite my detoxing with zeolite and taking clay baths and doing things and still walking and lately I've been experiencing a burning pain in my upper back shoulder area down my arms and today a new place my wrists burning pain and I'm I'm like okay what the hell is going on? And then I get emails from subscribers who tell me that everything that they're doing, nothing's working. All right, we're at war. There are so many weapons that they are using against us. The poisons uh, in our food, in our water, in the air that we're breathing, the frequencies, they can raise these levels and render us completely incapable of functioning.
You know, when I saw that guy, and he's dead asleep, snoring at the Honda dealership, I, I couldn't help but think of the cell towers and the cell phones and the Wi-Fi being used as a weapon. So, um, considering all of what we do know that is in our foods, in our water, in our air, and the frequencies, that's enough to make an awful lot of people feel exactly the way I'm feeling, or feel, you know, their manifestations of whatever it is that they're feeling may be different. But to incapacitate them, non-lethal weapons, they're incapacitating. What are we, what is it that we don't know that they're putting in our foods, that they're putting in the water, in the air? They could be putting so many different kinds of bacteria and viruses and so yeah this is a challenge and never feel any of you never ever feel that writing a comment or writing to me in an email everything that you're feeling don't ever think that I'm sitting here judging you know you for how you feel, don't ever feel that you're complaining. No. This is a time when we all need an awful lot of support. And yeah, many need to get it out, have a place where they can communicate how they're feeling because so many of you don't have people in your own life that will listen, that care. And I do understand that. So I was feeling really bad because I couldn't respond to everybody's comment. And underneath personal videos, I will say that all of the personal videos that I posted on Kafka Winston World, as well as Never Lose Truth a while ago, those were the comments that I always wanted to respond to because the personal is something personal. <laughs> and yeah, I have always responded to virtually every comment left under a personal just talking video or whatever it was. And now I'm finding it very difficult. So I never want anybody to take personally uh, my not responding. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with me, but it doesn't have anything to do with me not caring about what you have wrote nothing. In fact, I wrote, I read a lot of comments and it's heartbreaking. It's really heartbreaking to see how many people are suffering the consequences of their own families. It's hard enough to live what we're living, but then add on that? No. And there were a couple of comments that I just can't get into right now. Um, but comments like, I got another comment from someone who said that they're, they're upset I can't remember verbatim, but something about me hating Christians. Okay, well, you know, <laughs> I don't know 
how it is that anybody hears that, but you're manufacturing that in your own head. I've never said that. Never. And I don't even feel, I don't, I don't hate anyone. I don't hate any group. I don't hate any individual. Hate. Hate. What? I, I've tried to imagine what that might feel like. You know, so I guess there are a lot of people because they use that word a lot. And I have to wonder if they know what that feels like, if they hate people. But there's no one that I hate. And it's interesting because when I get a comment like that about Christians in particular, I'm always struck with it because very often the person who writes that I hate Christians within that same comment they are writing about the distinction between the real Christian and the phony Christians so when I'm talking you know and I mention something about Christians first of all why is it that you take personally what I'm saying about the phony Christians that you don't even like. Why are you taking it personally? Why do you feel like I'm talking to you? I'm talking about the Christians who are clearly not trying to be as Christ-like as they can be. And no, nobody can be perfect. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that if you're going to put that label on yourself, you are a Christian, then that means that you need to be taking that very seriously. And you need to be, you know, taking your Christianity seriously. You need to be taking your spiritual walk very seriously. And no, I don't see that in most Christians. But hate them? No. I don't even hate them. I feel sorry for them. They're lost. You know, I, I have profound respect for anyone who takes their spirituality seriously. You know, if they're a Christian, a Muslim, any, I don't care. I, I don't, what I care about is for anyone on that spiritual walk that they are taking it seriously and that they try their best to live the principles they speak. Of course, the cars, every video, <laughs> inevitably, a car with muffler problems will go by. Um, so, I get angry, I get upset, I, when I see and hear um, Christians lie and not take responsibility for those lies. I find it very, very interesting how on Kafka Winston World I posted a couple of videos because I was reading the Bible and I'd come across these passages and I was like, what? It's clear. So one very clear passage which is repeated in you know um, several books or lying is an abomination clear so maybe you who take personally and think I'm hating Christians have never come across Christians who lie and then don't take responsibility for those lies and the lies really hurt and they don't care they're all about themselves protecting their own ego but they claim to be Christian 
when I posted that video about here it says lying is an abomination and you know what I've never heard that or seen it quoted under videos from Christians I see an awful lot of other stuff but I don't see that and we're living in a time of great lies so when I posted that video I got people leaving comments saying you hate Christians I'm like what <laughs> um, and a lot of comments with people who were justifying their sins so then I come across other very clear 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 passages in the Bible clear teachings of Jesus where he's giving forgiveness of the sins of another and he says go but sin no more so yeah I want to know how it is that so many Christians feel that they can just keep sinning and well they tell themselves well we're all sinners what Jesus said sin no more which means you gotta do work to stop whatever sins that you're committing right yeah but I'll hear from Christians it's not about the work we do it's not about what we do it's not it's just about uh, believing in Jesus and turning your life over to no it's not and I'm sorry I don't have the beliefs that a lot of you have I do think that the work that you do on yourself is crucial especially if you call yourself a Christian you've got work to do um, you know that taking the Lord's name in vain oh God forbid I should you know um, well I, I just recently got a comment from someone who's saying I was taking the Lord's name in vain and I didn't even know how I could have been doing that but okay I was doing it um, but for my entire life up until a couple of years ago I thought it meant that you're cursing and then you know you couple that with saying God or whatever it's not about that what it is is calling yourself a Christian and then living an unchrist like life doing nothing to try to better yourself doing nothing to do the work necessary to stop sinning And living, you know, a self-centered life, waiting for God or Jesus to come back and fix everything, but all you care about is, hey, the afterlife. You know, there's an awful lot that don't really care about what's going on here in this world. So I'll get comments from people who say, um, we're not of this world I am in this world okay I'm in this world but apparently there's an awful lot of Christians who are thinking that uh, I wrote some notes down about I don't know not of the flesh I can't remember but we're we're not of this world yeah we are we are I'm sorry we're, we're living here right now and um, as far as I'm concerned whether you're Christian or not we do have a responsibility here in this life and we do have work to do but as a Christian how can you think you don't have work to do 
Um, I don't hate Christians. I have really profound respect and admiration for those who are who are trying their best to live a Christ-like life. And I'm sorry that there are people who are clearly hearing something that I'm not. And I have to wonder, you know, what is it that I am saying that makes you feel like I hate all Christians? But, you know, I also just want to say, and then I am really unbelievably exhausted. It's amazing. I, I honestly don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm detoxing with zeolite. I'm, I take the clay baths. I go for walks. Nothing seems to be working. And I feel for all of those who are experiencing that as well. This is this is a challenge to say the least. Um, but you know, people, I've asked Christians, what does repent mean? And the answers that I got were, well, you ask God for forgiveness of your sins and. You genuinely, you know, say that you're sorry. But I never heard. What I heard on the car radio last week when Billy Graham had died, so they were playing an excerpt of speech of Billy Graham's. And Billy Graham, that speech, he was talking about repentance. And, and he said that it means changing. You change. I never heard that word change. Repent means to change. It doesn't just simply mean you're asking forgiveness and saying you're sorry for your sins. I, I feel that a lot of people are kind of uh, justifying an awful lot of their own behavior so that their spiritual walk can be rather light and they don't have to really do the real walk. And I, I have to say, the walk is extremely hard and painful because it requires the stripping of one's ego. It requires reevaluation of all of your beliefs. It requires a tremendous amount of self-reflection. It requires of you to continually look inward, look at yourself, face, face your own lies, your own self-deception, face the pretense, and continue to do the work necessary to come out of that, to grow into the authentic, genuine person that God created. So an awful lot of people believe that God created them, but they don't do any work to do, uh, or any work to become that authentic human being that God created. We have been raised in a culture that has beaten individual individuality out of the individual. We have been raised in a way that adults that influenced us as kids they influenced us with their own beliefs 
that we then adopted and we grew up believing that those beliefs were ours when they weren't. We just kind of adopted them from those who influenced us early on. And so those beliefs need to be looked at and reevaluated and thought about. And, and until you do that work, you can't say that those beliefs are yours. You can't say that you have chosen, you've chosen the belief that you have. And that goes for all beliefs. But, um, but until you get to that point, you're just kind of the robot who's grown up as an adult and you're just carrying on your, your programmed script that was handed to you as a child. Yeah, I do believe that if there is a God, then God, if he created us, absolutely wants us to do the work necessary to become what he created. Not to continue on in life with all of those unresolved issues that we were handed in our childhoods, to continue on with those beliefs that are not necessarily ours. He wants us to become that authentic human being. So without doing any of that work and just carrying on with all of that crap that really smothers our authentic self, you betray God. It's a betrayal. It's a great betrayal of God. And without doing all of that work, you can't get to that place which is of a higher consciousness, that generative care that is genuine. You can't be a soldier in the army of God fighting the evil because you've not done any work to get to that place to be that courageous soldier. No, you end up just being somebody who is waiting for that eternal bliss, waiting to die so that you can then live eternally all blissful. What do you think is the point of God bringing you here on earth? Because if you're just waiting to die to get to heaven where you can just be happy, don't worry, be happy. What, what's the point of this thing? here on earth. So just because I don't have <clears throat> many of the beliefs that an awful lot of Christians have doesn't mean that I don't take this life seriously, that I don't have a relationship with Christ. So many people say, oh, well, you have to have a relationship with Christ. And if you don't, well, then you're just going to continue suffering. What a slap in the face to all of those who have a relationship with Jesus, but they continue to suffer. I mean, it's remarkable to hear, to read those kinds of comments. Um, and while I, there's no reason for me to distrust what a lot of people write and they writing that they were saved by Christ and um, it was Christ that got them uh, to where they are and 
you know, they suffering and, and, and it was Christ that gave them some solace. I wish that I had that experience. You know, I, I haven't. It doesn't mean that I haven't prayed my knees off. You know, I'm driving around the country, homeless in my car, dealing with an awful lot. You don't think I wasn't having an awful lot of conversations with Christ and God? You don't think as my circumstances got worse and worse and my health got worse and worse and I have no one at my back. You don't think that when I'm walking around that track that I have not had many conversations with Jesus. I've not had the experience that an awful lot of you share. You know, people will say um, that only God can fix what you're feeling. God has not fixed what I'm feeling. And I don't have the same belief. And I'm still questioning everything. And I will. I'm not going, I, I cannot answer those big questions. Neither can any man. So your beliefs, many Christians, I hear how they talk, and their belief is fact. Well, it's not. And I know that this is going to upset an awful lot of people, but it's not. It's your belief. And there's an awful lot of people on this planet with different beliefs. And there's an awful lot of people on this planet who literally don't know what to believe. And there's an awful lot of people who live their entire life searching and searching and searching. But I have heard that from Christians in particular, because I haven't heard it from the Jews, and I haven't heard it from the Muslims, and I've had friends that were kind of reached the entire spectrum of humanity. Uh, a lot of that has to do with just growing up in New York and and um, but it's only Christians who have forced have tried to force their beliefs upon me not all but a lot and wow well if I didn't if I didn't go along then there was something wrong with me I'm really tired of that I am never going to lie. I am never going to say that I'm a Christian. I do feel like I have a Christ consciousness. Um, does that mean that I walk my spiritual path like Christ? No. No. You know, I, I don't walk in anybody's sandals but my own. Um, I will say that I have learned the most important, the most important practice in that walk is living as honestly as you possibly can and speaking honestly the truth is number one number one stop the lying do the work necessary to stop living a pretense and get honest because if you're not starting there then all of the other work is what not so honest. And now, what we're living, we need that work to be done. We need that work to be done. All of us need to be doing that work. Christians, everybody. But, I do see an awful lot of people skirting around the necessary work and frankly no I don't believe you know if there is a heaven and God you know is going to be choosing who gets in and who gets not yeah look the Bible but the Bible itself it says right so 
Christians believe that the Bible, that's the Word of God, right there, only a few. The road is narrow. So tell me how it is that billions of Christians, they all believe they're God? Really? See, in my mind, and I've already, you know, thought about that, is who does get in? Why do you get in? What makes you special? What makes you more special than anybody else who doesn't get in? I don't know what happens once we die. I've thought, you know, is it those who say that we're just energy, you know, and we have these bodies that we're traveling in, but when we die, we don't really die? Those who believe in reincarnation, yes, sorry, there are a lot of people who believe differently. And sorry, um, there's no one right. No one, no one can say for absolute fact and absolute truth that it's Christ and it's heaven after life. So what if we do come back? I would think that if we do come back, that it's really important to learn the lessons in the life now that we have. Because if we come back, the same soul, we've got to think about this soul that we have in this life and attend to it. and keep it healthy or get it healthy. Learn the lessons so that we don't have to repeat the same mistakes in our next life, if there is one. I don't know. But not knowing kind of keeps me on my toes. <laughs> and if I had the belief that an awful lot of Christians do, which is that God is going to be returning to fix everything here, and that I didn't have to do anything, and I was just going off into eternal bliss, maybe I would feel absolutely fine just sitting back, thinking that, well, everything was written in the Bible, and the evil would be, you know, Satan would be creating an awful lot of deception and suffering, and maybe I would just feel fine about it all. I don't feel fine. And I can't imagine that Jesus, if living today, would be just waiting for God to come back. I don't think he would feel fine about all of the suffering that is increasing every single day. I think he would be so heartbroken, but would have the courage and, and the power to do all he could to help those who are suffering. But I don't see many Christians doing that. So, stop telling me that I have to have a relationship with Jesus. You don't even know me. You don't know. You don't know anything about 
what I do when I'm not making a video. You don't know how much I have prayed. You don't know how much I have wanted the solace that an awful lot of you apparently have based on the comments that I read. Well, that has not been my experience. Does it mean that I'm doing something wrong? You need to really think about your judgments. For some, this life is a very hard walk. For some, we do it alone. And you know, to Um, to say that somebody who doesn't believe what you believe is the reason why they suffer. I just, I don't even know what to do with that. Um, what I believe, especially because, you know, it, it's, I will never call myself a Christian. I don't believe that Jesus or God wants that. It's just a label. But I do feel a Christ-like consciousness. And I do think very often about Jesus. And I, I feel... I almost like I, I might have a Christ-like heart. Does that mean that I'm wonderful? Does that mean that I'm, you know, loving and caring? And No. No. I'm me. I can be really hard. I can be very gentle. I can be everything. I can be really hard on people who lie and refuse to take responsibility. And I can be I can be all different kinds of things. But I do feel more and more like my heart has opened to a point that it hurts. <laughs> and I don't like seeing any suffering and I don't whatever species of all life. So that's why, yeah, I'm upset a lot. Do you think Jesus, if he was here, wouldn't be upset a lot? <laughs> um, and so in thinking about Christ, in thinking about this world, in thinking about... See, I believe that God, Jesus, he wants people to fight the evil. I don't believe for one minute that Jesus or God is happy that so many are sitting back doing nothing in his name. Mm -mm. I believe we have work to do. And I do believe for those Christians that I have known and I see they doing nothing to change themselves to get more honest to get more real they continuing to be a cog in the wheel 
allowing all of this evil to continue? I believe that if there is a God, that God wants every one of us to pull ourselves completely from the matrix, to pull ourselves completely from lies, to pull ourselves from our own lies about our own self and how we live, and to pull ourselves completely from the evil and then turn around and fight it. That's what I believe. So, um, when I don't see Christians giving it their all. I don't have respect for them, but I don't hate them. I feel sorry for them because I see that they are lost. Oh, they can recite passages from the Bible. Great. What does that mean? You have a good memory still. <laughs> um, I absolutely do believe that everything comes down to your walk, not your talk. So I went on once again way too long, and I'm sorry for that. Yeah. If there is a God and you take things seriously, then you would know that you have to take life seriously. I hope you all have a good weekend. The other comments that I wanted to address were the comments left by those who are kind of reeling from their own experiences with the narcissist in their life. Just coming to the fact that they are experiencing the narcissistic fallout, the damage created by others, but also the comments left by all of you who asked if there was anything that you can do. Um, please know this, and I have said this repeatedly, on both Kafka Winston World channels and on this one, the comments that you leave that are supportive have absolutely kept me going. Don't underestimate. Don't underestimate your communication here. It's very important and it carries an awful lot of weight. So I think about you guys when I'm out and about. I think about you guys when I'm driving. I think about you guys when I'm walking. You know, when you get these comments from people that are so and they do you know have their effect and some can really bring you down and some are like just they just kind of knock you down a little bit more and then you come across your comments they pick you up you guys lift me up you've got to know that and I don't say things that I don't mean. I don't have time for bullshit. Sorry. Um, so you have helped me. You've kept me alive. That's no joke. Um, and those who were, you know, offering specifics. No, I'm not moving anymore. <laughs> I can't. I can't. And I'll explain in more detail why. Um, the social services, you know, uh, that's not what I need. And I'm not 60 yet, though getting quite close. And other comments, so. And I am, I feel 
you know, my vision's going. So now I look at everything and I'm a complete blur, you know. Um, my energy is really off. My affect, though I keep trying to, you know, bump myself up, the affect that you hear and see is not so much related to what I'm feeling emotionally, but physically. So um, I don't want anybody, you know, to think that, you know, I'm in a fetal position, um, just completely and utterly morose. Uh, uh, that's not what's happening. And I don't want anybody to feel sorry for me. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, that doesn't do anybody any good. Uh, it doesn't do me any good. And I certainly don't want to be upsetting anybody. Um, by what I say. So, please understand, there is so much going on in my life, internal life, <laughs> that um, I understand how things could be read into, you know, oh, her affect and she sounds really down and all that kind of stuff. It's energy. The, you know, weapons that they are using. So, and while I'm, I, I will never, you know, say that I am, you know, one of those uh, carefree, carefree and joyous, you know, perky human beings. I'm also not saying that I don't have my moments where I'm like laughing. I'm out and still engaging, you know, with people, strangers, but I'm still, you know, someone who Yeah, I don't have much trust in an awful lot of people. And that is, well, trust has been pretty much destroyed. But it doesn't mean that I'm holed up, never ever going anywhere, and I don't want to ever, ever see anybody. No, that's not what's happening as well. Um, uh, so... Maybe I should rethink my, I'll keep going until the fat lady sings. Because my mind has really been affected by primarily the frequencies. It is quite a trip trying to stay on point, trying to concentrate, trying to focus. We're at war. This is war. A whole lot of the weapons are invisible, but it's war nonetheless, and people are, unfortunately, the victims of this war. There are some that are still, you know, comfortable and feeling okay. I get to hear from an awful lot of people who are not. So I may have a different perspective of what's happening than a lot of you. Because throughout my years on YouTube, I know that it's gotten worse. Because I hear from my subscribers who were fine and now they're not. So, yeah, and I don't like evil winning. I don't. I don't at all. But I know. I know evil. I know it up close and personal. And I know what it can do. And I know that in order to fight it, you need an army. You need a very powerful force. 
and that force has not manifested yet. And it won't manifest until each and every individual does the work necessary to become a more powerful force, to become more courageous, to stand up to the evil. Have a good weekend, guys.